Hi, today I want to show you how to connect your Airtable database with your WIST project. So let's get right started. Um, so first of all, we need to create an Airtable database. And then we're just going to go to WIST. And I already pre-built this to make it a little bit easier. So as you can see, I'm rendering the items in here from my Airtable database and I just exposed my public key so in case you want to have any fun with that please feel free to do so but uh, yeah here you go and we're rendering that so let me now explain you um, how this works so we need to create a new app so we're, we will be clicking on the plus symbol and we will be creating a new application I called this Airtable global because the cool thing about the way Airtable structures um, its uh, tables and its databases, it gives you a base URL and then you can just add multiple paths on there like slash block on your website, but just now for a database to access different sub tables without having to add one app per table, which makes the whole organization way easier. So we're going to s call this Airtable Global. And now here comes a tricky thing. We have something called Firebase, Superbase. And now it seems like Wiz doesn't work with Airtable. Where is Airtable? We're not seeing Airtable here. But we actually need to connect Airtable as a REST API. So let's get some help from Google. REST API. What is a REST API? A RESTful API is an interface that two computer systems use to exchange information securely over the internet. So if we're going to go to some of those examples here, we see that your application can call a REST API and then that web server or the database can communicate using that REST API. And this is how Xano works. This is how Airtable works. This is how FastGen works, BuildChip, and so on. So Wist said, you know, they all use the RESTful, the REST API technology. We don't need to give you a list of a thousand things in here because you can connect everything with WIST. Now the question is if it's smart or not, but you can connect everything with WIST. So WIST is saying, you know, let's call it by the name. Let's say REST, you know. And this is the beauty about WIST. REST can connect with everything. It's not like Zapier where you will have to wait until they publish an official integration. Everything, everything on the internet works with WIST. It's just a question of if it's smart to connect it to WIST, but I'll reserve that for a different video. But yeah, here we go. So we need to add API, so HTTPS uh, slash slash api.airtable.com, right? And then I have to do V0, very important. And then here comes the app ID. So this is our base, U, uh, the, our base ID for our table. The question is, how do I get that? Let's go to the table and you will see we have this app this is our like our instance ID. This will in this will be the same ID for all tables that we have in this base. But now in this base we have multiple tables. So this is where we have the TBL standing for table ID. So for this first one, I want to use the base ID. So I would be copying that and adding that after the slash in here. So now the question is, why are we not now adding the table ID in here? The one that is after this one, which is relevant too. Because WIST gives us a very nice modular approach of working with those things. So we are actually defining that in the request. So the app has been added. added. Now we need to do the request to get the data from the database, right? So we're connecting it with our app, Airtable Global. And now we add slash with our table ID. This gives us the possibility, should I go and create another table? And this is my first time using Airtable, so I don't know how to do that. I will not touch anything. I'm afraid I'll break it. But, you know, I can call a different table in here using a different ID without having to update my app configuration. This is where we add the main instance ID on there 
and then we're going to specify the tables in here. And yeah, so here we go. Then we're going to do a get, meaning we're getting the data. We're not post. Uh, we're not uh, uh, posting. We're not pushing anything. We are getting the data. And then we have authorization. And then in the authorization, so we set the header. The header is that the thing that will go along with the request. And we are going to write return bearer. And then we're going to use with secrets for our token. So Airtable changed the way they work. Let's copy this. And um, because now they move to a security key um, to like a personal access token approach. So meaning you can call this hello. You can define the scope. We only want to read data. You can set your base. You can generate the token. And now in WIST, I want to go to the data store and to secrets. I can create a new secret, give it a name, and then I can set my API key in here. So I can set my API key in here, and then this will be saved on uh, WIST's uh, server. So they're going to store that on their database for me to give me like an extra layer of security to facilitate my API calls. Now, normally, if I would not be using WIST secrets and I would just add the ID in here like this, I would be facilitating this API call directly on the user's browser. So let's do this right here. As you can see, if I go to network and if I will be running this request right here, you will see that this directly went from my browser to Airtable. And you will see that I, in the authorization, exposed my API key. So if I would be the user, now I can, you know, have a little bit fun with that. So what WIST is doing here, WIST is giving you a way to facilitate this on their server. Now, I, I personally would not even do that as well. I would run this on my own server, but you know, it's, it's still a great feature that they offer you this. So if we're going to go to inspect again, we can go to the network tab. And if I'm going to reload that, we see that this request this time um, didn't went to Airtable, but went to server, blah, 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 to WIST and when we go to authorization, we see bearer with secrets. So they're going to save our API key as an environment variable um, on their, as it seems, where is this coming from? On their Cloudflare account. Look at that. So here we go. This is how this is working. So this is a more secure way of doing that. Um, it, was, it is certainly a neat feature if you're using this with Airtable and want to add that extra layer of security in there. And it is a simple application that is not doing anything sensitive with financial information. This is completely, um, let, let's call it, this is a nice day-to-day -day security feature which will probably not meet something that a bank requires, right? It is secure, it is great. It's not bank level security standards though. So just so that you know, but it's a great alternative to add an extra security layer on top of what you're doing in WIST. And yeah, this is how you're going to get that data in, in your WIST application. Now, rendering a list is also very simple. So you can just get to your list item. You have to add an attribute on there. You can go to render list. And if we go to the Webflow thing, I play a little bit with classes to make it fade in. You don't need to do that. But I add a WIST attribute of item. So I can go to this item item <laughs> and I can do render list. And then when I do my request here, you see, boom, I have my request. We get the first thing, which is data. But the way the Airtable API works, it is giving us records. This is where the list actually lives in. So we don't want to take the dot data. We need to take dot data dot records. This is what we're doing here because this gives us square bracket, square bracket. And this is very important because this is an array. 
this is a list, right? Let's actually go to uh, JSON Prettyfy to to visualize this. So let's add this in here. Oh, and let's prettify this. You see, we have a list and list start list end. This is the data we're getting back. We have an object in here with data. And we have another object in here with data. And we have another one. And so on. And this is what we want to use. This is the dot records. Now, if we were to use dot data, it is a completely different thing. If I'm going to use the dot data one, which you should not use with Airtable, and if I'm going to prettify this, you see we get this extra data of records. We get this object, we get our list, which is what we want, wrapped in an object, look at line 28, and line 1 and line 2. We get it wrapped in an object called records, which we don't want. So we need to use dot records right in here to access what is in this record object, right? And then once we access what is in this record object, it is going away. We don't see the records because we will access the inside of it. And if I'm going to take this right here, you are going to witness that, oh, wrong button, <laughs> that records disappeared and we just have the blank list. Right? And this is what WIST is using to render a list. Then we're going to apply the V iterator on there so we can render that list dynamically. And then inside those list items, right, we need to set text. So what we want to do, we want to go to our data in here and look for a name, for example. Right? We have the name. If I were to add this like this in the name field, just like this, you will see that they will all have the same name. Define goals, define goals, define goals. Because I'm targeting zero, meaning encode the first item, because our iterator variable starts at zero. This is how computers talk. They start at zero. Don't ask me who invented that. Probably not a human. <laughs> but here you go. So since we apply on the list that we are rendering, in here, the V iterator, and we can have multiple of those iterators, we can now go to this index in here and base it on the V iterator, right? So we're always taking the dynamic value, and therefore we will have the dynamic text for each of those items because the list gets rendered with the V dot iterator in mind. So if I reference the V dot iterator in the field that will give you the number in your list item, it will find the matching content text for your dynamic list item. This is how this is working in a nutshell. And this is a little bit also how Webflow CMS is working. And yeah, then this is how you're going to render data coming from your Airtable database. And if you ask yourself why I'm doing database, because I don't think Airtable is a great database. It is more of a spreadsheet. It's great for MVPs. But if you build something in Airtable, expect to rebuild it again. And, you know, if you need to rebuild it again, why not just build it in something like Xano? And a lot of people are saying, you know, I don't like Xano because... Their website doesn't look great. But I have great news for you. Web, uh, Xano <laughs> just updated their UI and it now finally looks beautiful. So if you didn't like their design so far, now is the right time to move to Xano. Actually, let's see, where did they build the website in? Is it Webflow? Ah, sadly not Webflow. Looks like they use Tailwind. Interesting, but yeah, Xano is great. So the, the, the a better alternative to Airtable if you're going to scale is Xano. It's the no code backend to power and scale any app. And yeah, I use it for everything. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all your time. 
and watching this video. I hope I could help you with setting this up. Again, thank you so much and uh, see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.